Until this point, we've considered the structure of organic molecules as behaving like rigid, inflexible objects where the positions of the atoms remain fixed over long periods of time. But actual organic molecules are in constant motion. On very short time scales, they exhibit large amounts of vibration and rotation. And to illustrate the motion that a molecule exhibits on a very short time, time frame, we're going to do what's called a molecular dynamics simulation. And let's use the molecule ethyl bromide, whose structure is shown here. So go ahead and draw this ethyl bromide in a Marvin sketch pad. Then under tools, confirmation, molecular dynamics, we'll be able to set up the molecular dynamics simulation and we'll monitor the motion for the time of one picosecond or one times 10 to the minus 12 seconds. Our molecular dynamics simulation is going to treat the molecule ethyl bromide as a mechanical object that's made up of point masses held together by springs. The stiffness of the spring will represent the strength of the bond and the masses will represent the mass of the individual atom. And so, for example, carbon will be 12 times heavier than the mass of hydrogen. Our simulation is going to be carried out in discrete steps according to the parameters that are in this table. There'll be a total of 10,000 steps and each step is going to last a tenth of a femtosecond. A femtosecond is 1 times 10 to the minus 15th seconds. So 10,000 steps lasting a tenth of a, a femtosecond each means that we'll be simulating for a period of 1 times 10 to the minus 12, or in other words, one very short picosecond worth of simulation. The simulated temperature will be 300 degrees Kelvin. That's the amount of thermal energy that's going to be imparted into our molecule by random Brownian motion. Let's go ahead and carry out that simulation. It goes pretty quickly. And then we see this animation that represents our time frame of one picosecond. The thing you mo notice most, perhaps, is that of all the atoms, the bromine moves the least. That's because it's the heaviest. And relative to the other ones, it's like a ball and chain just dragging that molecule down, slowing it down. The other kinds of motions you see are mostly vibrational motions, especially of the hydrogen atoms. And then you can see a little bit of oscillation in the methyl group. Maybe we can swing it around so that you can get a better idea of what that methyl group oscillation looks like. So you can kind of see it librating back and forth in an oscillatory type sense. If we were to look at this for a much longer period of time, we would occasionally see that there would be a complete rotation around that carbon-carbon single bond. But on this short one picosecond time frame, we don't allow enough time to see a full rotation of about that, about that bond. When the groups of atoms on either side of a single bond rotate relative to one another, the process is known as torsional rotation. And a very nice animation of this process can be found on the Cyber Model Viewer. Once you're in Cyber Model Viewer, load the animation for ethane bond rotation. Start that animation and what you'll see is the group in front appears to rotate relative to the group in back. Move that around and get a different view. You can see that effectively this is a motion that describes rotation about the carbon-carbon single bond. I encourage you to take a look at this carefully, view it in different orientations, and study the process of the torsional rotation in ethane. In the next webcast, we're going to look at the ways that chemists represent the three-dimensional changes that take place upon torsional rotation.